So this leads us to the last video of another woman, a Buddhist nun. She realized just what Mother Teresa said, just what Charlie Chaplin said, that there is this misery, that there is this suffering. It exists in the world, but ultimately it exists within our very mind. That unfulfillment, that craving, that desire. It doesn't matter what we do, it's never really fulfilled. Buddha called this the first truth. He based his own teachings and his own enlightenment uh, on this first truth that must be truly realized. There is unfulfillment. There is suffering. There is within me first and in the word and in my ignorance I keep perpetuating it in myself and in others yet I believe that I am not doing it I try to make myself happy I am feeding that greed that I and that mine so these first two videos bring us to realize this. There is suffering. And this nun, she was very sensitive from when she was very small and she realized this. And she dedicated her life in a very opposite direction of Mother Teresa, for example, to relieve the suffering, uh, this unfulfillment, this imprisonment, the bonds that keep us from knowing and seeing uh, that which we are, from being one in love. This video was taken uh, when uh, after 45 years of solitary retreat she spoke hmm? and uh, in the crew uh, there is some friends that I met in the Himalayas through the years um, and is a very precious uh, testimony Why it is so important? Because the realization of this suffering, of this unfulfillment, of this whole, Buddha said that is a truth. That means is a universal constant. Maybe you have seen or heard of the famous wheel of samsara, hmm? called Bhava Chakra, and he divided it in six realms. The gods, the deepest hell, humans, animals, spirit, ghost, everyone is in there. What is amazing of this depiction is that the spaces of these six realms are equal. There is not one that is larger, bigger or smaller than the other. And each of these six realms are equally far and equally close to the center. What does it mean? For suffering to be a truth that he identified as a universal constant, it means that you are either in it or out of it. If you are in it, you can go up to the highest heaven or to the lowest hell will be there in different forms, up 
apparent, not apparent, hidden, manifested, physical, mental, but is there. The misery of this greed that create all the suffering that we perpetuate, the realization of what Mother Teresa called the Calcutta that is everywhere, if you have eyes to see, lead us uh, to one undeniable conclusion. As others are suffering, and I am suffering, uh, is there a way out? Is there a solution to this, and what is it? This is the base of what I teach. It took me a long time to get here, to recognize it. But once it's seen, once it's known, everything else loses meaning. So, look at this video again with your eyes. Listen with your heart and receive uh, an amazing blessing. During the video, in five seconds, she transferred the merits hmm, of 40 years of prayer for everyone who has eyes and ears to listen. You just need to look at it and open your heart. The 11th century Tibetan yogi, Milarepa, said, Take refuge in the solitude of the barren mountains, the snows, or forests. In the wilderness cave, you have an open market where you can barter samsara for nirvana. How old is she? I think she's in her 80s because she was. 80. To pursue the Dharma, the aspiring Buddhist needs to take refuge, go into retreat, and meditate. She is a nun who has been in solitary retreat for 45 years, never leaving the confines of this simple hut. She has distilled her entire religious practice to three simple mantras, prayers for the welfare of all sentient beings, recited again and again through every hour of her waking day. Now here is this woman, by all accounts, extraordinarily beautiful young woman, devoted to the Dharma, who suddenly was kind of um, besieged by a suitor, a wealthy merchant who had the power to really demand betrothal. She escaped the suitor by climbing down through the hole of a cliffside latrine, then fleeing to a monastery. And she was a legend in the region. Every Sherpa who marched toward Everest would go toward her retreat and pay homage to her. But no one had ever seen her. She had never been photographed. She had never certainly been uh, interviewed or talked to. She has not been totally without human contact. She receives food twice a day, and Sherab treats her medically. And I will never forget in my life that moment when that wooden door creaked open. And what did we find? We found, in fact, an incredibly um, ebullient, um, talkative, friendly, kind. Her first gesture was to give us cookies. Mm -hmm. 
And, and what did she do? She went right into the Dharma. And then she sort of said to Matthew, you know, essentially, you know, it's great all that monastic stuff you guys do, and, you know, I respect it, and, and uh, it's quite, quite wonderful, but, you know, it really just comes down to a single mantra. She deeply prayed for all sentient beings to be free from all sufferings, uh, outer inner sufferings, and so from her heart she, she dedicates the merit as uh, she recites the uh, the Omani Padme Hong, the mantra of Om Namah Shivaya. So it's like the one Dharma that contains it all. Om Mani Padme Hong. Yes, that. So her life has been um, completely dedicated for 45 years to solitary retreat, uh -huh. to the recitation yes. of the mantra, yes. and all directed toward the um, well-being of all sentient right. beings, almost like her heart, just spreading yes. compassion. Yes. <laughs> it all boils down to our own mind, the, the quality and the nature of our mind. So, so all the, whatever the Buddha has taught, you know, the, all the many, many, many aspects of his teaching, they were all meant to understand the nature of mind. Look at this now. So the main thing is to give away all elaborate practice and simply remain in the Buddha, in the Buddha nature, in the Buddha's mind, and that's all. And she said, if she survive, with her mind, she'll come to visit me sometimes. <laughs> so I told her, I'll prepare nice Receive <laughs> what she give now. <laughs> Just receive it. Finding serenity through the Dharma is the experimental proof that validates the Buddhist science of the mind, just as a falling apple proves to us the existence of gravity. It may be hard to understand what this means, but it exists for the Tibetan. Many Tibetans do not believe that we went to the moon, but we did. We may not believe that they achieve enlightenment in this lifetime, but they do. All joy come from wishing others happiness. She said it's so simple. That is what brings joy, that is what gives peace, that is what fulfills the unfulfillable. Realize this greediness, this eye, this pride, this anger as suffering, as unfulfillment. And on the base of this realization, the realization of the first truth, look for the medicine, for the solution, for the end of that suffering, the end of that I, the end of that want. <laughs> 